Hey YouTubers, Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. If you're joining us from the previous video where we showed you the error code and actual sensor, talk more about the part, glad to have you. In this video, step-by-step -step process on how to replace that driver's seat position sensor. Let's get started. All right, YouTubers, back outside of the vehicle now. And in our previous video, when we did all the inspections on the actual wiring and sensor itself, we disconnected the negative cable to our battery. Safety first. During this project, we are going to be working with an electrical connection point as well as electrical wiring. And in our opinion, safety first. Cut all electrical power to the actual system. Use a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet and remove the cable and position it in a way where it's not going to hop back and make contact with that lead. From here, we'll hop in the truck. Back inside the truck and again, there is the part number, the large bold numbers. Here is the actual sensor and plate you've got the sensor itself you've got the electrical connection point that the wiring connection leads into and secures itself to you've got two holes right here on this portion of the plate and down below you will see two 13 millimeter nuts that come off the old one and have to be resecured to secure this actual plate to the bracket down below so coming down below i've got a flashlight in place and i'm going to put my hand under here Depending on how much room you actually have under here with your seat will depend on whether you remove the actual electrical connection point first or as you can see my ratchet and socket is on one of the 13 millimeter nuts. And with that said, with our actual clearance underneath this seat, I'm going to be very careful and I'm going to work around the connection point. I'm going to remove both 13 millimeter nuts first and that is going to allow me to pull this entire plate and sensor rearward to give me much better access to the actual connection point. And one of the main reasons I'm doing that is because I don't want to break any of this connection point as I'm trying to work my hand and arms under here to get contact with it. So again, I'm going to remove that 13 millimeter nut and then shift my ratchet and socket to the second nut and remove that as well. All right, YouTubers, that was pretty friendly. The thing I want to point out are those two studs that have thread on them. Those are the studs that the actual 13 millimeter nuts secure onto and secure that plate. All right, YouTubers, down below. And at this point, I've got the entire plate removed from those two threaded studs. And you've got an orange connection point. And on the opposite side, you have a gray connection point. And these are securing tabs. Notice right here, what you're going to do to remove this orange plastic cable is compress that little lip there and this is the actual securing bracket that it clamps onto or secures itself to. Again, compress right there. As you compress it, carefully shift this actual orange connection point rearward and out. From here, let's direct our attention to the gray connection point. Same thing, you have an internal tab that locks and secures this electrical connection point in place. You have to compress that center square tab, and as you compress it at the same time, you are going to shift this gray locking clip rearward and off. Be very, very, very careful as you do that because this is plastic and you do not want to break the securing clip because you will need this when it comes time to install the new sensor and secure this electrical connection point. So be very patient. Be very careful. And it's off. Again, be very careful. That is what it looks like. It comes off completely. Do not break it. Now to the bottom side, that same tab we compressed a little bit ago, compress that back in, and you are going to shift this entire part rearward and off. Just like that. And that is what that looks like. I'll go ahead and remove the old sensor. Old sensor on the left hand side, new sensor on the right. We're going to insert this and secure both of those connection points we just removed. New sensor is back in and align the actual sensor properly. You've got this large opening here that is for this clip to enter into and make that clicking sound. Go ahead and insert that accordingly. Just like that. From here, I'm going to hop to the opposite side and re secure this actual gray clip in place and take a very good look at this actual clip. 
the tab that makes the clicking sound or secures itself in place sticks out the actual top. So be very careful as you reinsert this into this actual connection point here. Push in until it clicks. And once that is secured, you will see that plastic tab come through and lock this connection point in place on the actual plastic mount here. From here, we'll switch to the opposite side, reinsert this orange tab in place, push in until you hear it click, and you see that tip of the actual connection go all the way through and hook around that portion of the mount. From here, double check all your connection points are secured, and we are going to align this actual plate back up on those threaded studs. At this point, you can see the two threaded studs sticking out, and we are going to position the actual sensor in place. Something very important that I need to point out. Take note of that actual underside loop or underside opening. That will actually loop under part of the actual track. Once you loop it under the track, verify that that upper wire is not underneath the plate and then rest it over those studs. Again, this portion right here has to loop underneath that slide rail. From here, grab the two 13 millimeter nuts and begin securing that plate. At this point, YouTubers, both the 13 millimeter nuts are secured. That plate and sensor is fully secured and the electrical connection points are fully secured. Just double check everything. Make sure everything is properly secured. And again, very important, this portion of the actual sensor has a looped hook and that has to hook around or loop under the actual slide rail because if it doesn't and you try to secure those two 13 millimeter nuts it's not going to go on straight it will actually tighten crooked and that is not what you want back out the battery and be very careful this may spark but if it does that's normal and again 10 millimeter nut go ahead and secure that all right, YouTubers, the battery is reconnected and we're back in the vehicle. And two things can happen at this point. Number one, once we start our engine, the actual sensor that we just replaced will begin communicating with the onboard computer and informing that computer that, hey, it's brand new and ready to get to work. And at that point, the onboard computer will agree that it's brand new and working and that check engine light will turn off. However, if that check engine light does not turn off at that point, you can hook your OBD scanner back up to the system and reset your error code. And once you do that, your check engine light should turn off. So with that said, we are going to start the engine. And we are going to allow the engine to run for about five to 10 minutes. And as you can see, that check engine light immediately turned off. So that brand new sensor got right into communication with that onboard computer and informed it that it is brand new and ready to get to work. And that onboard computer turned off that check engine light immediately. And as you can see with the odometer, 88,501. So in the event that you are in that ballpark odometer wise and you are replacing your driver's seat sensor or your passenger seat sensor, you are not the only one. From here, we are going to take it for a test drive and we are also going to monitor it over the next few weeks and just verify that it does not turn back on. Because if it does, then you may have to replace your actual wiring harness. However, we hope not because that's just extra money that you have to spend. All right, YouTubers, back from our test drive. We ran some errands, put about 35 to 40 miles on the actual truck, and the check engine light never came back on. So that obviously tells us it was the sensor and not the actual wiring harness. However, as I mentioned earlier, if you replace the actual sensor and your check engine light does not go out well chances are you have to replace that actual harness and as you've seen the actual wiring as we work through this project it is very simple it's that electrical connection point that feeds into the actual sensor that we removed and reinstalled on the new one and what you'll do is follow that wiring all the way back to the opposite electrical connection point and just those two electrical connection points is all you have to remove to replace that actual harness so we hope the video helped youtubers do us a favor below the video you will see that thumbs up icon Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely go to your settings, turn on your YouTube notification bell. Hey, once you do that, every video that we upload, you will be notified, you will be able to stay up to date with us, and that will be awesome. Thanks again for watching, YouTubers.